Hello viewers. Here we are today at Titan Machine Tool. We have an exhaust manifold from a 1942 international pickup truck. Straight six, green diamond engine. Green diamond, woo, green diamond. All right, there you go. There was a little kiss right there. But anyways, here we go. Resurfacing it, the flange was not so nice looking. Pretty corroded, not so straight, got some burn through, so it needed resurfacing. So we brought this guy in here, set it up on the mill. As you can see, we've already begun to resurface it. It's cleaning up nicely. It's cleaning up nicer than I would have expected. We still got this problem area over here. We'll do that in a moment. But I figured before we cut it all away, we still got some witness marks. I'll let you guys get a look at it. So 1942 International. We had a bunch of leakage over here. Leakage over here. We had leakage over here, but this one cleaned up already. That's nice. We still got a little spot of caca over here to clean up. But as you can see, it's already all around it. It's already nice, freshly machined, so the gasket will seal on that nicely. No problemos there. So we'll cut the rest of that in a minute so that you can see the dust, cast iron dust. But anyways, this is how we got it set up here. It was rather convenient that this thing has a, another a flange over here, a big, thick flange, another part of the exhaust. If you come down here, you can see it's over there too. So. It was rather convenient that this surface that it's mounted on is perpendicular to that top surface. So as soon as I mounted that up right there and I realized that that was perpendicular, made it a lot easier than having to tip the head and find some whacked out mongrel angle that this thing is cocked at, cocked, but it's not. So it made it easy, easier. So how I set this up here, I got one of these bad boys mounted in the vise, screwed to the vise, this big ass vise jaw. You can see back here. Mm -hmm. So we got that thing screwed to the vise. And now right here we have a piece of 3 8 structural hot rolled plate material I cut. And then you can see we got some bolt holes here. I don't know, you can't see. Let me point the camera at it. Now you can see we got some bolt holes here. We got some bolt holes at the top. So I figured out what that bolt pattern was right there and I drilled and tapped this guy, 3816. These are 716 holes. So that gives me some room to adjust this guy. So we screwed it to it. And then this big plate sticks down into the vise as well. Can't really see it, but it does, take my word for it. it. Goes all the way down to the bottom of the vise right there. So we're using the vise jaw and we're clamping that hot rolled plate to this back jaw. And then we got some cant twists on there, clamping it to that back jaw as well. And then we got four 3816 bolts bolting the manifold to that piece of hot rolled plate. It's like 3 8 thick screwed right to it four of them two down below two up top we got another couple little cant twists here just for some extra pinchy pinchy out on the ends we got some jack screws sitting on this nice stack up of box here stack them on up support underneath that flange same thing out on this side. Nice big block, stack up. Jack screw under the flange supporting it. So that's basically how it's mounted. Now when I first set this guy up, put it on there, indicated zero here. And then came all the way to the other side. Skipped right over all the middle. Came over to the other side. 
and checked where that was. And I indicated that guy like this at the most extremes, most extreme ends to try to get him as close as I could get him. And wouldn't you know, I could get zero, zero. So I set this guy up, zero, zero. And that's using the Z axis to indicate it. And then I ignored all the middle. And when I got that zero, zero, and I got it all clamped in place, I tighten these guys up, sock it all down nice and tight, make sure it doesn't move, recheck zero, zero, it's all good. Got the jack screws underneath, tighten them all up. Still getting zero, zero on both ends over here. Then I go in and I check all this in here where I'm at. I use an indicator, I'd write in minus five, minus nine, minus three, plus 11, all the way across just so that I could see what my condition, the condition my condition was in. And that is the worst spot. That guy was like, when I was zero over here, before I cut anything, and I brought the indicator down into that nooks and crannies down in there, it was like 40 thousandths. I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't have taken 40 thousandths off this flange, but the customer was here, he was getting all excited to seeing all this nice fresh virgin material. Doesn't do machine shop work, so when I said I'm taking off five thousandths, it's like, how much is five thousandths? I said, I don't know, it's like the thickness of a piece of paper. He's like, that's it? All right, take more off. Then as it was getting cleaner and looking nicer, he was like, oh, take some more, take some more. He wanted to get this, wanted to make this all go away. So he says, cut to clean. So we're almost there. We're gonna take that last pass right there on this 1942 International Exhaust Manifold. I was doing it by hand at first because this, this setup's a little sketchy. Even though that thing is bolt, bolted tight, everything is clamped super tight in the middle, you got these wings coming out on the ends over here. And you really don't have any clamping, any ability to clamp these things and keep them from vibrating. And that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about this thing vibrating while you're cutting. And then ugly things happening that you don't expect. So... I'm pussyfooting over this thing. And I went over it a bunch of times, nice and easy, until I got it all at the same plane right there. So the only thing that's keeping this thing from rattling and staying in place is basically the, the cast iron structure of the manifold. So you can imagine cutting out here with no support, this thing ringing and vibrating and everything else. So when the cutter comes over these ends, these extreme ends right here, I just put my hands on this thing and put a little pressure on it, absorb some of that vibration, put all of my pressure in that direction so that it doesn't want to wobble back and forth. I just kind of dampen it by leaning on it right there. Only at the ends. When it's in the middle, you can you can hear it. It's, it's nice and solid in the middle. You got a nice big robust amount of material here in the middle, really thick with all this and the flange right there with the bolts right in the middle. So this guy don't rattle or vibrate hardly at all. It's just when you get out to the ends, there's really nothing hanging on to him. So we gotta go nice and easy out on the ends. So let's turn this guy on. Cast iron, I'm running in back gear. I'm only using a half inch diameter end mill. It's nice and sharp so that it cuts the material. I don't want a whole bunch of surface area dragging over this thing, especially on the ends. If it starts vibrating when the tool's not doing any cutting and it's on the back side, this thing starts vibrating. Now it could make for a mess. So that's where we're at right here, right? We're right here. We'll chew up the program and here we go. Just gonna start cutting. Like I said, we just pussyfoot here. Cast iron makes dust. It doesn't make chips like 
all that stuff on the floor over there. It makes dust. I suppose if you looked at them under a microscope, they might look like chips. So we're running in back gear. Probably could run it a lot faster, but I just want to make sure that I don't create chatter or create vibration, so we're going slow. We're only running at like 190 RPMs. Nice shop, four flute, high speed steel end mill. So that's gonna wrap it over to this other flange here. And like I said, when it gets to the ends, I just put my hand on it and I apply a little weight just to try to eliminate any potential vibration. We don't want anything bad happening to this. Thing starts vibrating and then it moves and the cutter grabs and ugh. Don't even want to think about it. It's not like you can just walk into uh, AutoZone and buy another one of these things. All right, so it's gonna cut some air. It's cutting air. And then we're gonna wrap it on over and send it back to the beginning. And I essentially repeat the same milling path over and over again with a work shift. Half inch end mill. So I overlap 400, 400 thousandths each pass. And we're back at the beginning. Here we go, it's just that little, it's just a little tiny, it's a little tiny remnant left there that it's gonna take one more pass. Like I said, we're cutting air right now. So I'm gonna put my hand back on here just to help with some vibration. I'm probably gonna send this thing off and take, take one more pass. I'm certain this corner right here is not gonna clean up. out of the way. Don't want to wrap it through it. It'd make for a real ugly video. All right, so that guy's over there. It's going to take that cut, but we'll come back over here. We'll examine. We'll examine the problem area. See, it's still, still not quite nicey nice. I think the gasket would seal that, but anyways, we're going to take another five thousandths off. See what it looks like, but I'm not going to go more than that. It's going to put me at like the 40, 45 thousandths that we took off this flange thickness in total. More than I would have done, but hey, the customer, the customer said do it. You know what he did was, I have my scale, I have this Brown and Shop scale right here, and he measured this with my dial caliper, and he said, uh, oh wow, this thing's 20 thousandths, that's nothing. So if we took two of these, that, oh, that's nothing. 40,000, it's no big deal. I'm like, okay, whatever you say, 40,000, it's no big deal. So, all the rest of it's nice though. Nice and nice, cleaned up good. It's gonna seal nice everywhere else. He said, that's the only one that might be questionable, but I think the gasket will seal it. All right, people, there we go. 1942 International Green Almond Engine. Exhaust manifold resurfacing. I think the setup is the interesting part here. Cutting cast iron and resurfacing a warped, rotted out flange is, is not all that interesting, but setting it up, you know, it's all in the setup. You spend two hours setting it up and it takes you 15 seconds to do the cut. All right, people, 15 minute video. I hope you enjoy my content. Give me a like, subscribe. And have a good day. Thank you.